everybody, welcome back to the Juno Douglas City Museum. I'm Nico, I'm the curator of collections and exhibits, and we have Alyssa Borges on the camera. She is our curator of public programs, and today we're here to talk a little bit about this particular object. For those who have followed along on our Facebook page, you'll have been given this image the image of this object a little bit earlier in the week, so you've had time to think about it, guess it, and I did cover a couple of hints in the photograph itself, so now seeing the whole thing, I'm guessing probably a lot of you did guess correctly, this is a Geiger counter. And Geiger counters are made for detecting and measuring ionizing radiation. Now this particular um, instrument is from the 1950s. It's made by the Precision Radiation Instrument Company from LA, California, and they were very popular and widely used during the 1950s. This is a drill hole model, which claim to fame actually was a 50 foot long probe cord that would allow you to drop the probe down into holes and gain readings up to 100 feet below the surface. So it was very, very useful for people who were doing any kind of prospecting or um, looking for most, mostly uranium. This particular Geiger counter was owned by the U.S. Bureau of Mines, which was active in Alaska and still is, and the idea behind Geiger counters and measuring ionizing radiation was first put forth in 1908. However, it wasn't until 20 years later that Hans Geiger, with the help of his PhD student Walther Muller, was able to create the Geiger Muller tube, which is the main component that actually allows this instrument to function. And it does measure alpha, beta, and gamma rays. Uh, this particular instrument unfortunately only alpha and beta. However, other Geiger counters would measure all three or different combinations of those three. Fortunately, one of the limitations with Geiger counters is that they don't often differentiate between the two or the three forms of radiation. However, being able to detect and measure radiation overall was very useful to a lot of people. And like I said, mainly used in the 1950s, and that was mainly because the 1950s was a huge uh, time of uranium boom. After the bombing of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the revelation of the Manhattan Project and really the Cold War nuclear arms race, there was a huge rush to, to um, locate and mine uranium deposits around the United States. Especially in 1947, the Atomic Energy um, Act was passed, which put the, um, the Manhattan Project's procurement of, a, of uranium on the Atomic Energy Commission, which was a, a civilian-led organization whose main job was to provide the U.S. military with uranium. And they, their solution to this was to encourage local, well, regular Americans to go out, prospect, and find uranium ore deposits that would then supply the government for the nuclear arms race. So throughout the 50s, a huge boom period, lot, a lot of prospecting, especially in the lower 48, and then up here in Alaska as well. And there was a or a uranium ore site located in mind on Prince of Wales Island, however, none here in Juneau itself. About 1962 is when this boom ended for a number of reasons, but mainly the cost of maintaining nuclear uh, material and overall uh, questions about nuclear security kind of put that, uh, put a damper on, on the, the price of uranium. And also, it's not exactly a safe thing to easily mine, so for the average American it became difficult to process. So like I said, by the 1960s that boom period was mainly over. Local prospectors and um, people who are interested in minerals still do use Geiger counters just like this. Some still use ones from the 50s because they were made uh, so heartily and uh, many still work to this day. And people do still use them when they're out a a as a leisure activity for hobbying to find radioactive material, uh, usually small amounts, but just in their rock collections. So still being used to this day, not so much at the high level mining and prospecting like they were in the 1950s, but an important window into a different form of mining that happened around the United States especially, but also here in Southeast Alaska. So thank you again for following along with us and for giving it your best guess. Stay tuned for the next installment we have of Guess That Artifact, and thank you again for watching.